My question is, um, how should welfare groups best keep their focus when public attention is drawn to high profile but peripheral welfare issues, whilst more significant welfare problems are barely acknowledged? Well, that's a fairly lengthy but uh, in involved question. Paul. Yeah, I thought it was a cracking question, though, I've got to say, so um, thank you for the opportunity because uh, within racing it's probably one of our great frustrations, actually, that... Um, um, and we understand why, why it occurs. I mean, we understand that high-profile events and newsworthy, you know, topics provide that opportunity for, um, you know, for welfare groups and animal rights groups to leverage off the back of those. But at the same time, it's also frustrating um, when we know that, for example, the, you know, the potential of epidemic that we face over winter with literally thousands of abandoned horses, that press releases from World Horse Welfare and the RSPCA on that topic generate much less public interest and media interest than a release about the whip and the use of the whip. Um, so, and that's not, that's not um, me or, or British horse racing being precious about the whip, it's just simply a reflection that sometimes um, they're out of kilter in terms of, the, uh, in terms of the actual issue that exists. I do wonder whether there's actually an opportunity to p potentially leverage off high profile events though to highlight um, the probably less, you know, um, less popular but more significant welfare issues. Um, and I guess by that, is there an opportunity to, where the public focus is on the horse, to actually identify issues and highlight issues related to welfare but perhaps not specifically attached to that event. Um, and I think that, you know, in terms of the risks that are posed within our sport, we know that there is, um, you know, there is an imbalance between those. I think also, um, you know, for us, it's about, we understand the roles um, and we respect the roles that the, that the charities and the welfare bodies have, um, and for us not to engage in them, engage with them would be wrong. But at the same time, we have a primary responsibility to our stakeholders and the people that invest in our sport, and sometimes the leverage that comes off our high profile events, um, you know, doesn't sit that comfortably with us. Um, I think that in terms of the management of, of the welfare and the opportunities that are presented within thoroughbred racing specifically though, there is also an opportunity to tell some very positive stories about welfare. Um, and I think that again, you know, Britain really leads the way for a sport that is economically very poor comparative to overseas horse racing jurisdictions. The number of programs and the commitment of the people and the resources to welfare um, of the thoroughbred within this country is significantly better than anywhere else that I've seen in the world, despite the economics of the sport. And as a sport, I think we would open the doors to, um, you know, the opportunity for welfare organisations to use our high-profile events to highlight other concerns about uh, equine welfare. Thank you, Paul. Um, Lucy. Well, yes, very good question. Um, I think the um, I think the campaign that recently was launched on the verge, I believe it was, which I think was an umbrella um, sort of press release press campaign about the the critical situation being faced by all the welfare agencies at the moment was very powerful and got a lot of media coverage and so on. Um, I hope that that is useful in helping translate that that coverage and awareness into action in Parliament where it's needed to. Um, to improve matters, to, to assist welfare agents, um, agencies doing what they need, need to try to do, to try and control the, the overbreeding that we have and the, the horses in desperate straits that we have. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's extremely difficult because it's not as glamorous. Um, but I think that our welfare agencies do do a good job getting the message across. And it's for all of us within the horse world as well to sort of connect it through to to the competition world, all horse lovers and beyond. Um, easy to say, harder to do. Very much. Will. Well, this is, this is clearly a planted question by Rowley, who I believe uh, tomorrow goes in front of his remuneration committee and he's going to take all these ideas and go, here's my strategic plan for the next four years. Um, I guess that uh, it is a balance, isn't it? Because all organisations need the oxygen of publicity and that, that free publicity comes through the, the cases that are going to make the front pages. Uh, uh, we all have um, PR departments and comms departments who work flat out to get the stories they want 
into into the newspapers, onto the into the airways, into the um, the websites, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I suppose they they are essential to give the oxygen of publicity. I flew back from Marrakesh last night, a, a day early, really, to be here, um, and you know saw some work, you know, in and around the souks going on right at the coalface. That would never that would never get the publicity, but is clearly essential. Um, so I suppose it is a balance. I do think that. Um, uh, the, the, the use of the high profile events and it's great um, I also work for Simon at Olympia so I, I need to do a bit of promoting of Olympia you know they have a, they have a, a partner charity each year as does badminton as do uh, I'm sure numerous other high, high end competitions and I think that those partnerships are, are really where the story can get out and let's face it some of these films that you see that come out from World Horse Welfare uh, RSPCA such great organisations they, they touch the heartstrings of, of uh, people in this country, and I, they can, if, if you can get those films in front of people, they will promote the excellent work that goes on. But we shouldn't forget, the high-profile cases are pure oxygen. Thank you, Will. And to finish, round off the last question. Well, in a way, we've been seduced in this um, question panel because we spent a fifth of our time on a question on the Grand National, which is discussing 40 of the best-looked-after horses in the country, who, if they injure themselves, will be attended immediately by the finest vets. And we've spent not perhaps as much time on something like 16,000 horses which are standing out there in fields at the moment, who the welfare bodies recognise are at serious risk this winter. And they're standing out there without any veterinary care. They may have a bit of grass at the moment, but they won't have anything later. They're full of worms and they'll get no help. And what's more, none of the rescue organisations have any room to take them. So what's to happen to them? Um, we're all of us guilty of it. We see a picture, as you say, that tugs our heartstrings and we concentrate on that. And I think it's an enormous credit to this particular charity that it's continued to focus, particularly in places abroad, which sometimes we think, oh, we'll deal with what's on our own doorstep. But on the major cases, the really serious things, uh, and this charity has never lost sight of it from the moment that Ada Cole started. Thank you. Um, well, that uh, concludes uh, to the forum part, unless there are any questions that uh, any of you want to bring up that you've heard from these, uh, I have to say, eloquent and, in, uh, and passionate answers to some of these questions. Can we take the one at the back? Simon, thank you. Andrew Finding, the British Equestrian oh. Federation. Yeah, there you um, are. <laughs> we, we've, we've heard quite a bit about the National Equine Database and its loss and DEFRA's uh, reduction or, or closure of funding for it. If it is important to our long-term welfare, how does the panel think it should be funded? Anne. <laughs> <laughs> the passport issuing bodies should get together. It's a, an absolute fiasco. There are a very large number of horses that have no passports at all. Um, something has got to be done about standardisation. Something has got to be done also about providing some sort of benefits that make people want to register their horse and have a passport. Um, I don't think we can look to government. It's all very well saying DEFRA shouldn't have cut the money, but everything is being cut. And the reality is that public money is not going to be forthcoming in the foreseeable future. It's up to the industry itself. And those people have set up their passport bodies to generate income for themselves. We've all got to get together and put money into the pot to do this. Unifying purpose. Thank you. Uh